client came to me asking for me to build a website, a back end to ask <clears throat> a back end for the mobile API endpoint services, and then also a mobile app. Of course, me thinking that, I'm like, oh great, this is like the perfect client ever. Little did I know that client was an overachiever, meaning that once I gave them the price for all that, they slowly backed away into the point that they stopped answering my calls. <laughs> but then that led me to this question of why did it cost me so much to do all that? Because I had to think about what was coming to mind. I had to build a CMS for the, for the website that she can use and manage her own content by herself. And then I had to build a back end for the API endpoints, which in my head I'm thinking, okay, either it's going to be in Laravel, Ruby on Rails, or Node.js. And then a mobile app, which of course I'm going to use PhoneGap for just because I love PhoneGap. And then all that is to keep it in mind is how can I, I have one thought came to me, how can I consolidate that into the smallest piece as possible? And that's when I discovered the WordPress JSON API. What's great at it does, it gives us a way to access <coughs> our information through a very amount of sources without any additional data, without any additional development time, which gives us a streamlined effort. First thing I'm going to talk about is Continuing that, what we're going to discuss today is the first a quick overview of JSON. I wasn't expecting everyone to be familiar with it already, so bear with that little quick section on it. <laughs> if you will, just okay, like we're going to sift through that one. And then from there, we're going to go on the RESTful best practices and, of course, security stuff and just how you should develop your RESTful API endpoints. And then from there, we're going to talk, actually talk about it and then the, word, the plugin. And then we're going to get into actually how you can start selling it and using it in your daily <coughs> routine as far as the developers. First things first, an API primer. Now, JSON, that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's pretty much a way of thinking of a data, <coughs> a client-side data handling that runs, that looks exactly like a JavaScript object-oriented notation. It uses key value pairs, and you can, there's no real formatting to it. You can, if you want, you can say like first name as the value key, and then value whatever you want, or you can just put a random string in it. It accepts numbers, string, <coughs> strings, objects and arrays. So you can have a little flexibility with how you want to actually send off your information to the next person if you're building it. Uh, and of course, it, one of the great aspects of JSON is JSONP. It allows client-side communication between cross-domains. So if I'm on a domain on server one and domain on server two, on server two, contacting dom domain one will only, be called a, will only require a function on success handling. Make sense, everybody? OK, moving on from that one. And here's just a simple example of JSON, you know. It looks very nice, uh, clean, not at all like XML, if anyone's familiar with that was in the dark ages. Oh, man. All right, now RESTful. REST stands for <coughs> Representational State Transfer. What it is is a code architecturing style format that's been widely accepted as a best practice in form of setting up your own API services. The way it works is pretty much simple as far as structure goes. It, uses, it takes into mind all the HTTP requests for credit operations as its base as far as just create, <coughs> read, update, and delete. And it has authentication methods like basic and OAuth. If any of you ever tried to use user, user, user information to log in like from Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus or whatever other social media platform, maybe even Pinterest, then that's kind of, you're already familiar with that part. Now, best practices, of course, like anything, there's best practices involved in development. You want to make sure that the base level has its own, <coughs> it's, sim it's similar throughout whatever your API endpoints are. So whether it's resources, WordPress JSON, which is the default of the plugin we're talking about today, whatever it is, it has to be that same base level because that most makes it scalable. And by scalable, it means that no matter at what certain points, you may start off at the beginning with maybe one or two endpoints, but it also keeps in mind availability for you to grow into like maybe 100, depending on what type of client or application you're trying to build here. <coughs> and of course, for security reasons, you have to use an SSL. Whenever you're making a post, if you don't have an SSL certificate on it, anyone can see your information, whether it be a user, password, certain credentials like credit card information, whatever it may be, anything, anything secure that you don't want to expose has to be over SSL. Moving on. Now, using the WordPress API. Now, this section is going to be a quick primer of setting it up and getting into it. Now, I know it's not going to be too detailed, but that's why we're going to leave more of that into the actual discussion part at the end of this, OK? Now, the setup is pretty simple. You either go to the repo on GitHub and download it and include it into your plugins folder, or you can just download it directly from the plugins repo in your WordPress admin. And from there, of course, you activate it. And then once you activate it, it's already default URL base set up for you. And if you want, you can hit that URL and with the basic generic post just to get a GET request of all the list of posts that you have. And then you're done. 
You see it, you have a beautiful big JSON file of all your posts, depending on if it's pagination or not, of everything you've done recently. Now you might be asking, okay, that's great, and it has a tons of features, of course, the WordPress JSON API has, stuff like, hey, I can make a post, I can edit a post, I can create a post, or I can add a media attachment, or say whatever else in general I can do in the WordPress admin just for a JSON API point. But how do that make that better? How do I extend on that? How can I make that my own? And that's where this JSON API plugin really shines because it is truly extensible in a familiar way that any WordPress developer can easily get formatted with. If you look currently on the board right now, you'll see that what I'm doing is adding fields from ACF to my response. Because natively, metadata does not return in a JSON WordPress API, so you have to make that call. I know everyone here is either, I know no one's just trying to be that guy who doesn't like the most popular thing, right? So everyone loves ACF, right? <laughs> awesome. But yeah, wherever it's like any type of metadata, wherever it's plugins from ACF or just in general, you always want to make sure that you hook into the filter to make sure your ISP gets accessible in case this doesn't default what you need. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, another way to extend it is by creating your own endpoint. So say you have a certain post type or certain user information, certain set of information that you want that you need separated from it. This is the perfect way to do it. As you can see here, it's pretty much the same. Instead of add filters, to add action to the WordPress JSON server before serve call. And of course, all this documentation on what actions and what filters and which hooks you need to go into are available in the WordPress API documentation. So as we can see here, going back to the code on the white, the board right now, this is initially just an initialization, <coughs> initializer for the, code, for the post type that I already set up inside of my example class right there, as you can see it on the require once. And then from there, it's just registering it filters, and then it's adding it to the WordPress JSON API file itself. And here is where we're actually making our routes. So to make a route first, you have to, of course, declare a base and then what type is going to be for whatever information you're trying to pass on through. And then you register it. It's pretty straightforward to the point where you can get it without actually needing to dig too deep into the documentation. So always keep that in mind. Now, the most important part of my talk, how can you sell it? Of course, we're all developers here. We can all Google some code, figure out plug-in, figure out, hey, I can figure out these some on. Why am I coming to this talk? You come here because you want to learn how to sell it and get into your corporate everyday life. Now, one of the few things that any developer here can honestly say is they've always had that one client who, as soon as you hand off the keys to your WordPress site, they break everything and give you that call in the middle of the night or sometime with awkward timing saying, hey, I don't know what I did. I just updated this plug-in. Or, hey, I'm doing the CMS. I'm adding this code here and there, and it's not working for me. So how many, raise a shot as a show of hands, how many people would love to have an interface that they built for themselves, for their clients, that they cannot do anything except edit posts, edit data, and they know you wouldn't be able to break anything? <laughs> I think everyone should have their hand up right now. Well, luckily for you, with the WordPress API, JSON API, you can do that. What this allows you to do is say, I know the previous talk here was on Backbone, so say if you want to build a single page application that hooks up to your own services as far as clients go. If you have certain user credentials, give them a user password and information, and then from there they can log into it and they can access their own stuff through your system. That way they don't have to worry about server maintenance. You never have to get that 5 o'clock call saying, hey, my Bluehost account's just suddenly crashed. What do I do? And you're saying, like, uh, call Bluehost? <laughs> you don't get those calls anymore, and it's always safe and secure, and you know for a fact that whatever they do is not going to break anything that you built. Another thing that I'm most happy about is that it can power mobile apps. Like I said earlier, I'm big into the hybrid mobile space, and I'm really loving PhoneGap, and I really love using Angular for it. And the one of the ways I've been recently trying to implement it into a current project of mine is by giving a client a WordPress backend for their site and a JSON API. By using the JSON API, they can actually feed their information to the app. And then from that, not only can they populate certain static content, but they can also feed in local notifications or hit up notif notif local notifications or notifications from the server, wherever it be. Information like, hey, this re recurring event, like your next purchase for this event, you're about to run out of stock on this item, you need to buy it now. Or even <clears throat> just as far as handling all the information and data that I need on the actual enterprise level. Now, how, out of curiosity, just for my sake, how many people are actually interested in building mobile apps right now? I feel like this side is always raising their hands, and you guys are just sitting there. <laughs> you guys aren't interested in coding at all, are you? <laughs> I, I kid, I kid, I kid, I kid, I kid. 
but yeah, so yeah, that's definitely one of the new powers and powers that the WordPress JSON API can bring to you, and it involves us as a whole, as a community, and WordPress as a web application framework. <clears throat> Another thing is that it can also, is how many, if you build a plugin and you need an admin interface, you can utilize the admin interface for, out, for <clears throat> certain information and help your users streamline their interface instead of saying, hey, go to this tab, reload here, re constantly refresh. I mean, we've all seen those big plugins with the tab interfaces on the admin site saying, okay, got to click here and then here and then here. It takes like forever to load. Wouldn't that be great if it can just load like that using Backbone or Angular and then just hooking up into your uh, JSON API post to ch handle data information? Of course, it's going to need a server call to save or actually reload anything. But as far as just that one bit of seamless code, I'm sorry, I love seamless so much that it just gets in my head and I cannot think of anything else. I hate wasting time. All right, now, we so far are selling, we've talked about building out your own interface for your clients that you can use, mobile apps, and an admin interface. Now, moving on to a little bit more topic of legacy apps. We've all actually had to work with clients that use legacy apps at some point, right? Wherever it be something like, oh, we use this old .NET site. We don't feel like upgrading it. We're so used to it. It works just fine, but we love the WordPress backend. Or, oh, we have this old, um, I'm probably going a little bit too far here, CodeFusion site that just, just runs so amazing. <laughs> just runs so amazing. We don't want to get rid of it, right? <laughs> I'm saying I'm going back, man. Just let it live. But at the end of the day, the West one of the problems that constantly face bigger enterprises like AT&T, uh, the New York Times, Delta, whoever it may be. And with the WordPress JSON API, you can help them out by integrating through their current website with the points, F points. <clears throat> now, curiosity, has anyone currently thinking about how they can use this into their daily development routine to sell it to clients? Uh, anyone have any ideas like to share, get some discussion going? No? Aww. Is it late in the day or something? Because no one seems <laughs> exciting right now. <laughs> no, I think some, some of the things you were talking about on your, on your JSON API, I mean, one of the things that uh, is this, this whole REST idea, mm -hmm. uh, the idea of a, of, of a distributed application where you're actually doing either with credentials or JSON P, uh, pretty much you, you have some sort of state, mm -hmm. and it goes. So when we were doing uh, e-commerce plugins uh, a few years back, this is the type of thing that we, we were able to get reports from the various uh, providers. And so uh, this is a, uh, an excellent way to get uh, business reports, from, uh, not only from your local server, but from other, uh, from other sites as well if you've got, again, this, keep going back to cross-site resource, resource sharing, but, uh, so, yeah, I mean. No, it's definitely a great, definitely a great point. I guess if anyone didn't quite clearly understand what he was saying is, what he was saying was that as a plugin developer with the WordPress JSON API endpoint, once it gets to the point where it's actually integrated into core, that when that happens, say, all your users' information can be shared and spread across, and you can collectively you collect them into one place as far as using JSONP, wherever it be on your own server, if that's what they want to do, or just for out their own multi-site network, however it may be. Did I correctly summarize that? To yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so if you were to set up an application, you mentioned Angular, mm -hmm. like if you want to build an Angular application and use WordPress backend and serve up some JSON, um, what would would you throw your whole application into the root of your project and put WordPress in a subdirectory? Or would you, like, sorry, if you didn't want to have only WordPress, but say you wanted to integrate three different APIs into your single project, would you maybe have like WordPress in one subdirectory and then <coughs> like Google API in another one? Would you set it up like that? Or would you set it up as a normal WordPress installation and then use your Angular app with, within the theme? or um, Third option, just having it on a separate domain. You mentioned yeah. something about adding. Yeah, I mean, it on a separate domain. It, to me, it really depends on the client and the project. Yeah. 
So say if I'm in complete control of it or I really don't, it doesn't, to me it wouldn't matter as much where I put it personally. Just as a preference, I would personally put it inside of the theme just so it would be easily maintainable on my code functionality for my site as far as what's being on, presented to live right now is in one place. But depending on the client, to say I may have a client that has one, this actually goes back to a funny story about a previous client I had. They had a mobile application which only ran on iPads. And from there, we had to figure out a way of displaying information from a system. But beforehand, we didn't do it. was all raw JSON files. And with the WordPress JSON API, I came up with a solution, whereas I can just set up, stand up a site for them, hand it off to them, get those API endpoints set up. And that way, they can just constantly update it whenever they want, instead of me having to package, just start package up something weekly on every Friday at 5. So does that answer your question in general, or is it? Yeah, of course. I mean, at the end of the day, as at the end of the day, every situation depends on what you're trying to purpose is and what issue you're trying to solve. I can definitely see a situation where as I would want my Angular project separated from my WordPress instance, just because it's not truly interrelated to anything I'm doing at that point. Yeah. But at the same time, I can also see it going inside of it. So. Okay. Next question. The backbone talk? Yeah. No, it wasn't. But. Oh, so one guy mentioned the JSON, JSON API. This is the one going into core. What he's talking about. This is because mm -hmm. what I okay. So this is they're both called the same thing. Yeah. It's just JSON. I thought REST was in one of them because he kept saying REST. Yeah, it's the JSON well, REST API. Yeah. WP JSON REST API. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Just making sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, the other one. Mm -hmm. It's just called the yeah. REST, REST API, yeah. API. Okay. And okay. it's an older mm -hmm. plugin that's similar, but it's much older. Now. Okay. It's not the one we're talking about. Yeah. If you if you go on the uh, plugin <laughs> repo and you you'll know you find it. I guess. You'll, the one the one that's going into core it, it says that one of the authors is like the, the REST API team. Um, okay. So when you see that, you'll know you're in the of course, the Jetpack has now got JSON API is one of the apps. If I just enable that, am I done as far as getting in? Or do I need to plug it also separately? Um, I'm not as familiar with Jetpack's API personally just because I don't use Jetpack. Well, it, it, it just says the, the JSON API, or you know, Jet, the JSON API. And I'm assuming all of this just loads that the current. I don't current. think so. It uses the one from the .com. There's a, there's a JSON API that's available in .com. Okay. I think that's what Jetpack would use. Templating system that um, keeps buttons like the edit link and read more link, you know, still working when you retrieve it, or is it some sort of thing in the data that that still uh, preserves those buttons, those links? Um, okay, so as far as editing posts and updating posts, those are actually different action calls you can do. As far as you, if you have your post ID, you specify which one you want to edit. If you want to edit one, and then from that endpoint, that's where you send your information. It'll update it for you. So there's actually no buttons being passed down from as far as the data being rescinded from the server. It's from the JSON data. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Cool. Anyone else? Um, do you know when they might possibly be? Uh, that's the, a good uh, question. Um, well, well, I mean, I know it's I mean, for 4.3, right? Actually, it keeps. Mm -hmm. Post meta in there. Is that going to be data, or do you know? <laughs> I know it's definitely in the. Definitely, a lot of bug reports have them considering putting the post meta inside the general response. And as far as actual core release, it's one of those things that's kind of been a revolving date for a while. Initially, I read probably like last year it was going to be 4.1, and then next thing you know, it hasn't been, and I'm still saying, okay, come on, guys, when's it going to be? Set a date. But and then, is there or is taxonomy? Yes, tax items are in there. So, um, can I also just use the standard uh, WPDB, WP Query um, API 
is to create my own customized database query and set up my own customized endpoint. Mm -hmm. And then really I don't care, you know, what else gets built into it automatically, right? Correct. Yeah, that's one of the great things about this, I guess, I want to say, keep saying plugin, but at the same time in my head I'm thinking it's going to get in core eventually, so I shouldn't keep calling it a plugin, but for now I'll call it a plugin. Future. Yeah, it's the future. Yeah, the future. Let's put it that way, the future. <laughs> for the future of WordPress, it's definitely one of the good points is that how extensible it is and that it allows you, expose you to the hooks and methods you need to make your own endpoints instead of just binding you into the WordPress structure itself. If you like get all posts in JSON, are you getting all post data along with that? Or just like a title and an ID or something? Then when uh, you would click through, you would get the more data? I'm, I'm just worried like, oh, no. so if you have the, a blog mm -hmm. that has 4,000 posts or something, are you getting all that information in the in the single request? Oh, no. For yeah. that, it depends on your pagination setting. So. Uh, yeah, of course. So whatever your pagination settings are in the back end of your site, that's what will end up being a response. It's pretty much the same so. thing as just getting, making a simple for loop on your at index.php page while your post, however you want to do it. Very cool. Questions, questions, questions. Do you have good examples of any open source custom post type examples or anything like that that you've made? Or do you have any access to a good resource for that? Um, it's, well, it depends on how you're trying to do it. As far as custom post types, how do you see it in mind? Because initially, with the WordPress JSON API natively, it supports just as long as you specify what type of post you want, it can echo out whatever custom post type you want to need. So at that point, after once you make a custom endpoint, it's just for your own custom, it's just for your own preference as far as just hey, I want this to be related right here. So. Mm -hmm. Questions? Honestly, I thought the discussion part would be everyone getting excited. They start coming here with ideas saying, hey, we already been thinking about it. We just came out of this backbone conversation. Now let's figure out how we can come up with some ideas on how to use it. So I've got a good one, actually. So, like, say you're using, uh, I don't know, does anybody here use Managed WP or Infinite yeah. WP? So, like, technically, if you had a, I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm totally not going to build this. Great idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's only on camera. Don't worry about it. Great. Um, so, like, if you wanted to do that same kind of thing, like manage WP, infinite WP, that's a pretty performing. Like, some of those things are pretty uh, non-performant tasks to check what version or to check what plugins you have installed. But potentially, you could have your own endpoint that would be like slash API slash. Plugin, uh, like current status, current plugin status, or plugin slash current, or something like that, or plugin slash active, and that might re respond a with a JSON call saying uh, these are the plugins that are active right now and these are the versions they're at, and then from that you would be able to know uh, what you need to update or not. No, right? It, uh, Jetpack already comes with that. Function. Oh, I know. I'm just saying if you wanted to build it by yourself. It's, so it sounds like you're talking about like WPCLI as an API. Sure. I would think once this gets into core, uh, plugin authors would, would be able to start. A feature of a plugin would be a custom, a custom endpoint. Where whereas prior to that, you'd have to have some sort of dependency that says if you've got the JSON API plugin, then my plugin will work as a custom endpoint, or I have to create, or I would have to replicate my own. But if, if you're a plugin author, you're, you're creating something uh, for the central repo uh, or uh, something for uh, uh, premium distribution, once that's in core, there's a standard way that, uh, that gives us all one more way to share uh, with one another. So I mean, part of, the, part of the silence you're hearing is that this is very cutting edge stuff and, and it's still not quite not quite uh, in the mind space, but as, as I'm thinking about it as a, as a plugin author, um, I had to create my own endpoint stuff when I was writing my plugin because I couldn't count on that thing being 
Mm -hmm. and, and so I wrote, wrote only the things that I needed, and I ended up using the, uh, the admin Ajax and, and localize so that I could do it that way. But this is a, so I mean, I've got all the functionality I wanted, but it was very specific to my plugin. And so that would also mean sharing uh, between plugins would be less. Yes, of course, of course. I mean, once it goes back to the future, once the WordPress, as this functionality is a part of the WordPress core, we can all start utilizing it. Like you said, it can be more seamless as far as saying, hey, this plugin has to implement this own API here, and then this one has to do its own thing here. So it will be definitely less taxing as far as just what goes on in the back end. So, and don't. We'll all just be fighting over yeah, we already do that. A, a kind of sorta. But yeah, so. And I think it, uh, the the Yoast WordPress SEO plugin, if I recall, it actually has uh, endpoints, custom endpoints they've already put in the plugin that basically check to see if the page you just on the API plugin is enabled. If so, it adds in all this extra API functionality. Uh, otherwise, you just don't get it. Uh, WooCommerce. Uh, yes, this slide post will be available on my website at the end of the day. Hey, go for it. <laughs> Everything on this slide is publicly accessible, so whatever you want, just riff from it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, any more thoughts, anyone? Any questions? Ideas? That random idea that's tinkling in your head that you think everyone's going to think you're crazy if you say it. I know there's a lot of people in there with these ideas, so just come on, say it. <laughs> so essentially, I think what it could give people is if you only wanted someone to make posts, because we heard a talk this early this morning about um, you know, sort of shutting down the admin and doing this and doing that. So essentially, you could have an endpoint, which is slash admin, or API admin, and they could log in there and only see whatever you want them to adjust and give them capabilities um, to. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. What you're describing is more so building out a custom dashboard that integrates with WordPress through the API endpoints that you're building that are already set up. So say, say I'm a service provider who has a few five clients who I want on my service, who I, who I think don't understand WordPress, who constantly keep breaking their site, breaking everything as soon as they make one little update. So what I do to fix that would be is with the WordPress JSON API, create a service on my site as far as data handling goes and specify which specify users for each section of the site or certain pages, wherever you want to be, or set up a multi-site network, however you already have it set up when you're in. And then from there, use your API endpoints to connect to a dashboard that you're building separately from the WordPress instance entirely, wherever it be like... Facing it to them. So you can yeah. only see posts on this one site and only the ones that you create. You can make that role or capability, assign the person, but then they log into WordPress, and then you just uh, that's what you get. It's not really, you're on the right track, but there's a little bit missing from there just because you're not, in the f terms of logging into WordPress, think of it more so as you're building out a separate layer on a separate server, separate domain, and then there's certain, as using a login call callback function on the API to channel, it, to authenticate them to see if this person actually does belong to this so site it does or something. Have the login API, but yes. Just, you're pulling that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, th I think the uh, clarification is the endpoint is technically just data. It's just like a JSON object. It's, mm -hmm. it's information. It's either you're consuming it or you're it's not giving you buttons or admin interface or anything like that. So I think that's because I've kind of heard like some assumption that you might get some extra, you know, UI or, or some interface yeah. built into this, and it's really the data exchange that's going on, not necessarily the UI component. I mean, you have to build that. So if you want to use Angular, if you want to use WordPress and connect to a different WordPress site and pull that data in, whatever, that's up to you. 
decide what to do with the data, right? Like, Correct. So that's, Correct. that's what I kind of hear mm -hmm. a few of these things as far as like UI components being brought in. It's not that. It's you build that whatever mm -hmm. you want to. I have a question. How long, obviously you've been using this for a little while, and I honestly have been um, not using it because of the quick, because of the fast development mm -hmm. cycle that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. when it comes out, how has the changes, like as you do this project, um, or as you do development on some of these client projects, how uh, how hard is it, how hard has it been to implement the changes, or do you just kind of set it and then, you know, as long as there isn't a security announcement, mm -hmm. then you just kind of like, it works at that point? Um, for the most part, I've only used it on a client which where that was a concern was just this one client who kind of we as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk we started on the conversation as far as the mobile projects and the mobile apps and then it kind of just fizzled out but as far as that issue handled I mean it goes back into a restful best practice as far as versioning if you notice it on Twitter Facebook whatever type of API endpoints whatever API layer you're using there's always like a version number attached to it like say API slash dot one dot oh I think Twitter's on two dot oh still right now so as long as you version it it works out perfectly as far as just what you need to make sure everything's working. As, and this also goes back unless you're going to do it in a consumer-facing project where it may be a plug-in or a new mobile app. Because that, say, not, cause not everyone's going to be on the latest version all the time. There's always going to be a user that's going to be on the, still the beta version when you're already on 2.0, so you have to be prepared for that information and be able to process that by either properly versioning your code now or just having a constant fallback after fallback after fallback just to make sure they safety, safety can use whatever you built for them. Questions on the actual detailed implementation. I've not used this particular mm -hmm. API or this particular plugin. Uh, RESTful, uh, you've got um, basically you've got your four uh, HTTP methods. You've got your uh, put, post, get, and <coughs> mm -hmm. and you mentioned it CRUD. Now there's two ways of mapping to CRUD. There's what they call the naive method and then the um, quote unquote proper method. The naive method is usually good enough. Do you have a one-to-one -one mapping between uh, CRUD and the four API methods, or do they, um, or does it matter? Is that is that a matter of implementation of the back end point? Where, where are those choices made? Um, as far as implementation goes, for the for the most part, on the WordPress JSON API, mm -hmm. it's all already built for you, and there's documentation for that on their site currently. But there, as far as extending it goes, that's 100% up to you as far as how you want your personal stuff structured. The only thing that's good, as far as like, naming conventions and how you want it to, as far as responses, how you want that to be handled. Okay, now, now, I guess my question is, are you specifying CRUD, are you specifying at the CRUD level, or are you specifying it at the HTTP method level? That's at the HTTP method level. Okay. My reference to CRUD earlier was just as an explanation of, hey, this is what RESTful does. Right. This is how it represents. Okay. Um, I did a little bit on it maybe a few months ago as far as I had this one client who was building out this weird, it was like a weird conversation whereas they needed to segment, they find a different way as far as just get their legacy project integrated with the WordPress admin interface, but also be able to, but they don't want their <coughs> users to act as far as the employees on their current site to have, you know, their use app passwords or Username just because it's just save time. So OAuth is definitely cool to use in it, but it's one of those things where it can get a little tricky. That make that help you? Um, yeah, I was just curious because I know that there's not much documentation on that. Yeah. And uh, so I'm just curious if you played around with it. I, I can imagine if you knew another talk that um, covering OAuth and based on P would be a probably well thing. So. <laughs> Uh, not on me right now, no. A lot of projects I work for that sadly use, I've had to use this stuff where I decided NDA agreements on, so. I could show you, but if someone ran, this is recorded, so. You know. Show you, but I have to kill you. Yeah. I don't have lawyers. 
Any more questions, guys? Well, it's been a great time talking to you. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to get, get in touch with me, those are the methods of reaching out. That's my website. That's my Twitter handle, ignorva.com. And <laughs> that's my email address. So hope you enjoy the rest of your day.